There's a tiny spurla that heads for the Anofa Quarry at the end of the Farquhar branch line. It goes for some distance alongside the road. Thomas and Twilight were always careful around here in case anyone was coming their way. Early one morning, a policeman with a bike was sitting close to the line at a road crossing. Thomas liked policemen. He and Twilight have been great friends with a constable that recently retired. Good, Good morning. morning! They were expecting that the new constable would be friendly too, but I'm sorry to say that he wasn't very friendly at all. His face was completely red and was very cross. Disgraceful! I didn't sleep a wink last night. It was so quiet and now engines come whistling suddenly behind me. I'm very sorry to hear that, officer. We only said good morning. He's got a point, officer. Just because you had a bad day, it doesn't mean you can take your anger out on other citizens. Then the policeman angrily pointed at Thomas. You there, where's your cow catcher? Huh? But I don't catch cows, sir. Don't be funny with me, engine. He then looked at Thomas's wheels. Just so I thought, no side plates either. He then wrote something in his notebook. According to the Sodor Transport Act, engines going on public roads or city streets must have their wheels covered up and a cow catcher in front to protect people and animals from being dragged under the wheels if they get too close. You don't have any, so that makes you a danger to the public. What? That's ridiculous. Thomas and I have been here hundreds of times and never had accidents once. That makes it worse. And as for you, young lady, don't even get me started on that ridiculous horse costume you have on. You're not fit to be seen in public wearing that thing. Costume? He then wrote Regular Lawbreaker in his book. Now I suggest that you get a cow catcher and side plates as well as get rid of that silly costume, or I'll see to it personally that you are taken off the railways. Now go about your business. Thomas and Twilight puffed sadly away. Meanwhile, Sir Topman Hat was enjoying breakfast. He was having toast with marmalade. Just then, his butler came in with important news. Excuse me, sir. You are wanted on the telephone. Oh, bother that telephone. Who could be calling me at this hour? 
I'm sorry, my dear. Thomas and Twilight are in trouble with the Sodor police, and I must go help the situation at once. At Ellsbridge Station, Twilight told them what had happened when they encountered the new constable on the way to the quarry. Dangerous to the public, he said. Horse costume? Huh. We'll see if we can solve this little problem. He then went to speak with the policeman. But no matter how much he argued with him, it was no use. I'm sorry, sir, but the law is the law and it cannot be changed. And as for you, your highness, I do apologize for what I said earlier about your appearance and will overlook your part in all this, seeing as you are royalty and therefore have diplomatic immunity. However, your engine is still a citizen of Sodor and must abide by its laws. Sir Toppin had felt exhausted and cross. I'm sorry, Twilight. It's no use arguing with the policemen these days. They're very stubborn and serious with these laws. You can't fight with the Sodor Transport Act. I guess we'll just have to make those cow catchers and side plates for Thomas. What? But everyone will laugh at me, sir. Especially Rainbow Dash. She might say that I look like a steamboat, or even a tram. Sir Toppin had stared at Thomas for a moment. Then he laughed. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of it sooner? Our railway needs a tram engine. How did you come up with that brilliant idea, sir? Well, Twilight, when I was on holiday with my family two years ago, we met a nice little tram engine named Toby. And like you and your friends, he also had an equestrian pony that worked with him. As a matter of fact, he just so happens to be Applejack's grandmother, Granny Smith. Wait, you mean that Applejack's grandmother used to work on this island and she didn't even tell us that yet? I'll explain that later. Like I was saying, they used to take freight cars from farms and factories to the main line, and they even used to haul passengers too. But the trucks and buses have already taken over most of their work, and I think that Toby needs to have new work for him. Besides, he has cow catchers and side plates. I'll write to Granny Smith and their controller right away. A few days later, Toby arrived at Lower Titmus Station with Granny Smith and her family already waiting on the platform. Ah, Toby. Good to see you and Granny Smith again. It's been a while since I saw you two. Surely has been. Girls, come over and meet a new friend of mine. When the Apple Sisters saw Toby in person for the first time, they could hardly believe their eyes. Well, Granny Smith, I see these two ponies must be your granddaughters, correct? Sure that they are. Toby, these are Apple Jag and Apple Bloom. Girls, this here is Toby, the tram engine. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Toby. Our granny has told us some stories about you. Anyone who's a friend of our granny is a friend of ours. Why, thank you, Applejack. I'm very flattered. By the way, Toby, I see that you brought your faithful coach, Henrietta. You don't mind, do you, sir? The station master wanted to use her as a hen house, and that would never do. No, indeed, Toby. We wouldn't allow that. Besides, she is far too useful to be a hen house anyway. Applejack Union, could I speak to you privately? Sure, Granny. So what is it you want to tell me? Well, Union, I've run and known Toby for a real long time, and he's one of the best friends I ever had. So anyway, I need some pony to run him for me while he's working for Sir Top and Hack now. Since there's no other pony I know to trust for looking after Toby, so what I'm saying is, would you like to be Toby's new driver? After all, at least it's someone in our family. Really? You mean it, Granny? For real? I surely do. I'm a little old and rusty to work on the railway again. Besides, I'm where I needed the most back home at Sweet Apple Acres. So, Yonin, would you take the offer? Don't do it for me. Do it for Toby. Granny, I accept the offer, and I won't let you or Toby down. <laughs> That's this spirit, youngin! <laughs> After Applejack told Toby what her granny told her, he was very pleased to have someone close to his friend taking her place. 
Then Granny Smith spent a few days training Applejack how to run Toby properly. A short time later, they were assigned to the tiny spur line to the Anopha Quarry. And surprisingly, they made the silly freight cars behave even better than Thomas and Twilight could. Or you! At first, Thomas was a little jealous, but he was very impressed when Toby rang his bell and frightened the constable, and they've been great friends ever since. <laughs>